get down from the plane And there to greet me are my old friends and family Down the road I look, can there was Mary Long jet black hair and lips like cherries It's great to touch the green, green grass of home Yes, they'll all come to greet me Our arms are reaching, smiling sweetly It's great to touch the green, green grass of home My old heart is still standing though the paint is cracked and dry and there's the old palm trees that I used to play with down the lane I walked with a girl named Mary long jet black hair and lips like cherries it's great the green, green grass of home Then I look and look all around me And see blue skies and golden beaches that surround me And I realize, no, no, I wasn't only dreaming For there are still the old hotels and schools and places of worship, the mountains, waterfalls, flora and fauna of incredible beauty. It's great to touch the green, green grass of home. Yes, they'll all come to see me in the shade of the old palm trees as we chat and relax on the green, green grass of home. Hi, my name is Patrick Ellis. I would like to begin by briefly introducing myself to you. I came to the UK in 1968 which I have lived for 51 years and I am married to my Irish wife Norma for 50 years and hold a dual citizenship with the UK and Sri Lanka. I am an author and here is my book which is a bestseller who dare sells. I, I say this with all humility and I am also a singer song writer. Here is my CD in this CD, the world famous song, The Green Green Grass of Home, which I rewrote with a bias to a Sri Lanka. In fact, all the lyrics are geared towards amplifying and Sorry. proclaiming yeah. the beauty of my country of my birth, Sri Lanka. Now, I also have many other credentials to tell you much about, but it would take another couple of DVDs for me to do so. So without wasting any more of your precious time, let me get straight to the point. I have now returned back to the UK after a short two-week visit to Sri Lanka in September 2019 and this is where my story begins. I was born in Sri Lanka in 1944 to a well-educated, socially well-positioned and a wealthy extended family of medical doctors. Though I have traveled extensively around the world over the years, Sri Lanka is one place that is very close to my heart. Firstly, as it is my ancestral homeland and secondly 
for a multitude of other wonderful experiences it offers, such as its spectacular scenery, wildlife, exotic cuisine, religious diversity and pageants, music, history, etc., etc. At one end, in Sri Lanka, there is extreme wealth and opulence. In the other end, there is abject poverty and all that goes with it. And it is the latter that touches my heart deeply and profoundly. Of course, there are other drawbacks too, but it is not my intention to touch on these matters in this DVD. Before I proceed any further, let me say at the very outset, as a very God-fearing Roman Catholic that believes in the freedom of all faiths to practice their religious beliefs without fear and oppression for the benefit of his or her fellow mankind. I have always been free and open and enlightened to witness and understand the differences that exist by actually going to various places of worship and observing those ceremonies. This I have done not only when it comes to religion but also cuisine, culture, etc. whilst in the UK and in my travels abroad which has been a very enriching and wonderful experience in my life. So now let me play for you a song which I recorded recently. I did this song to highlight the plight of the poor, needy and underprivileged people in our world. It is a song for the hopeless and a voice for the voiceless and it goes like this. As the world looks upon me as I struggle alone They know I have nothing and they are not wrong But in my heart I'm rejoicing I wish they could see Thank you Lord For your blessings on me Thank you Lord For your blessings on me A broken roof Right above me There's some food on the table No shoes on my feet You give me your love, Lord And a loving family Thank you, Lord For your blessings on me Blessings 
on me Thank you Lord For your blessings on me Thank you Lord For your blessings on me During my recent visit to Sri Lanka, I had the opportunity of meeting Sister Noel Christine Fernando, a Catholic nun who has worked in the Katunayaka, Jayala, Ekala and Nigambo areas in the western province of Sri Lanka for 40 years and who took me on a visit to meet some of the families, victims of the April 21st, 2019 Easter Sunday bombings and also to the beautiful St. Sebastian's Church in Katoa Pitya, where the atrocity took place, claiming the lives of 159 people who died in the church that day. Amongst the Catholic worshippers on that fateful day were seven Muslim girls present at the Mass who were injured and of which one died. The 70-year-old nun started her working life as a flight attendant for Air Ceylon but gave up that career to work with the poor, needy and underprivileged people in Sri Lanka. Sister Noel Christine belongs to the Order of the Sisters of Charity of Jesus and Mary. On the 25th anniversary of her religious life, she was offered a tour of the Holy Land, but declined the offer and requested a cash gift instead. To start her own organization, the Janakalana Samaji Asapur for social administration and leadership training, deviations sold. Based in Katugoda, that's near Katua Pitya, near the Katunayaka International Airport. She started in the year 2000 and is supported by a team of volunteers and by, by Father Sarab Iddamal Goda, a graduate from the London School of Economics. I now have Sister Noel Christine's mission statement. As Christians, we are committed to love others. We need to rise above our natural likes and dislikes and love others, including even our enemies. Our lesson is God calls for unquestioning faith. The call of faith is not once and for all. It comes again and again in life, demanding more each time in daily events and choices of our life, Jesus supplies the power to. To love and forgive is our calling, not to judge and condemn. Forgiving the other removes anger and bitterness, heals the wounded hearts and memories, allowing them to reclaim power and dignity. Uh, our obedience to him never goes unrewarded. Jesus is the compassionate God with us. His invitation for me was to move with a concerned, caring heart to vulnerability and brokenness of a situation of nobody but chaos. This was a challenge to me, to love without conditions, accept goodness and faith and forgive their wrongdoings. The biggest challenge I experienced almost daily was to be ready to accept the responsibility of reaching out to others, going beyond 
my comfort zone or fears, fulfilling their day-to-day -day needs, not counting the cost of my own talents, resources, and my own purse. Deep in the earth, the salt does its work. My friendship is needy to go beyond the margins, cross borders in the hope that those borders can be broken down and thus to be not just for others, but with others. Service of mine is meant to help the human spirit find freedom. Therefore, I could go as far as sharing of a spirituality, sharing with them what it is that makes us live and what it is that inspires them and us. Practically, it is to be the consoling hand and voice of God. To encourage, to console, to strengthen, to heal, to help and to accompany his people, tired and feeling hopeless, broken and vulnerable and far from their Lord. Sister Noel Christine goes about her daily duties in a white minivan, wearing an immaculate blue habit, working tirelessly, fighting for human rights, feeding and educating the poor, intervening in disputes to bring about peaceful resolutions, sorting out injustices. Her work is carried out lovingly irrespective of whatever religion or race where the discrimination and injustice arises. Based on the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ and Lord Buddha and being non-political by nature, she is dedicated to the service of people of low income, oppressed and marginalized communities due to unjust socio-economic factors and political structures in Sri Lanka. Sister Noel Christine relived the Easter Sunday, April 21st, 2019 bombings in Katwa Pitya Church, which was heavily publicized in the international media. She saw the carnage firsthand. For two weeks after witnessing the bloodshed she helped victims in hospital, providing psychosocial care. She told me she visited one home where the lady died and the husband and two children were now without a wife and mother. They lived in a small one bedroom house. They told her it was sad that a bomb had to destroy the community for the world to know how poor the family is. Many families feel destroyed and forgotten. The family she was talking about was that of a deep sea fisherman, Linton Rex, who took his wife, Chin Chindira Sikha, aged 40, while at sea, where his su sweet nine-year-old daughter, Netudini Akasha, suffered severe abdominal injuries and had to have 24 stitches and three shrapnel removed from her back. These are the pictures I took of Linton and his daughter, Netudini Akasha on 18 September 2019. Linton told me he went to sea on the 17th of April and returned on the 24th of April after his wife and Chidra Shekha, age 40, had died on April 21st and was then buried. He also has another son, Nishal Chundipa, age 17, who also sadly lost his mother. 
River Father Sarat Iddamal Goda translated from Sinhalese to English the following articles appearing in the Maubima, meaning motherland, newspaper on, 20, on the 20th June 2019. A summary of a report prepared by Nisanka of Sidiwa for Maubima paper on of 20th June 2019. Again, this is translated by Reverend Father Idamal Goda. My name is Linton, a fisherman by profession. On the day of the explosion, I had gone fishing in the sea. Our boat had passed the Sri Lankan border. That day, the skipper received a radio message from the owner of the boat to return home immediately, but gave no reason. I reacted and asked whether the owner is crazy to ask us to return when he had not even when we had not even started fishing. Then he said a bomb had blasted in Batikalo and that I had to be taken home. I told him that I had no one in Batikalo and that I came from Chilau. However, we took three days to return home. When we landed, I was told that a bomb had also exploded in Katuapitiya church. When I reached Katuapitiya, I saw white flags hanging all along the road and banners announcing the death of my neighbors. But I never thought that my wife would be among the dead. When I got closer to home, there was a banner indicating that my wife too had been taken away by the bomber. I could not believe it. I questioned why God had done this. Didn't God know that I had gone to sea? Now my children have lost their mother. She was both a mother and also a father to the children. She did not wait till I brought money home. She made hoppers at home and sold them to earn a few rupees to feed the children. My son is Vinod, studying in grade 13 at St. Mary's College. My daughter is in grade 4 at St. Peter's College. We live a very poor life. We do not have a decent house to live in. Our house is made of wooden planks. The lack of proper house has been a great worry that my wife always had. I was dreaming of a decent house. As a fisherman, I always live a life of uncertainty. I spend more time in the sea than at home. This cruel bomb has dragged us into a deeper problem. These terrorists could have taken revenge from those corrupt pol politicians. Why did they have to do this to the innocent people? The damage done to us cannot be compensated with money. When I returned home from sea, my wife had already been buried. My daughter had been warded in the Nigambo hospital for treatment of her wounds. She was in the intensive care unit ward. She had been badly wounded in the stomach due to pieces of iron which had pierced through. There were 24 stitches on her stomach after the operation. When I saw her, she had gained consciousness. I quietly asked her what happened. The following is what she narrated to me. On Saturday night, they all had gone to church. They went inside the church through the main entrance and sat on benches. Mother sat on the back bench and I sat in the front. After the mass, I suddenly heard the sound of crackers. Immediately, I felt pain on my stomach 
and when I looked back, I saw my mother had fallen and was bleeding from her mouth, and another person had fallen on her. I saw so many others also that had fallen. Then I got out and pleaded that we be taken to the hospital. A neighbor from our village rushed us in their car and brought us to the hospital. But my mother was taken somewhere else. Even when I spoke to her in hospital, she was not aware that her mother was dead. Later I went to the cemetery and prayed before her grave. I thanked her for the services that she had done to me and my children. And I promised her that I will look after the children. This particular terrorist had been living in her own neighborhood, paying a rent of 40,000 rupees. He and his family, his wife and two children, I would give, um, I would like to warn our people to be careful hereafter in giving houses on rent. The certain tragedy was that of Milan, whose family I also met. The story of Milan, who was killed in the explosion in St. Sebastian Church at Katwa Pitya. Uh, this article came out on Thursday the 6th of June in the, in the Mao Bima newspaper and is also translated uh, for us by uh, Reverend Father Sarat Iddamal Goda and it goes like this. Janit Vidushan, a 16 year old boy, was among hundreds who were killed at the explosion that took place on the morning of Easter Sunday at St. Sebastian's Church at Katoa Pitya. Janit is pop popularly known in the village as Milan, the name given to him by his grandmother. The cause of his death was due to heavy bleeding. As a result of a piece of iron which had pierced through his neck. He was studying in grade 10 at St. Joseph's College in Nigambo and was preparing himself to sit for the O level exams this year. His father, Amila, aged 41 years and is a mason by profession, his mother is Nirosha. According to the father, Milan was said to be a very religious boy, so much so that at his request, father had to construct a shrine of St. Sebastian in front of his house. Every morning and evening, Milan, together with his two brothers, used to pray at the shrine. Seeing the religiosity of his son, everyone in the village used to say that one day he would enter the seminary to become a priest. The father said, Milan loves me and his mother. He continued saying that he is a ma mason by profession. When he returns from work and sits down to relax, Milan used to get closer and ask whether I'm tired and then rub my head or remove the cement dust from my feet. He wept when he recalls all those memories and he can only curse the terrorists. He asked, what else can I do? On Good Friday, the family had gone to church. On Saturday, Milan did not want to go for Mass, but was very keen to attend the Sunday Mass. However, for some reason, which I cannot explain, I advised him not to go for the Mass on Sunday. But when he sought permission to go for Mass, we both gave him permission. And also we told him to take his younger brother along with him. I was watching both going towards the church on their bike. 
I and my wife started preparing for a little celebration at home. After about two hours, someone on a motorbike brought the youngest brother Abilas home and both of us were shocked to see him with blood on his body. He came running to us and cried that something had happened to the elder brother and that there was a blast inside the church. I went towards the church on the same bike and saw the catastrophe inside the church and searched for my son everywhere but could not find him. I prayed to God to save my son from any danger and to give me back my son. The following day my brother and some friends gave information that his body was found in the mortuary of the Columbo Hospital. I as a father who has lost a loving son would like to tell the Muslim community that there is no point in shredding crocodile tears but they have a responsibility towards a country to report to the military about the extremists known to them. The third family I met was that of a young boy, Saura Satsara. He was only nine years old, who suffered severe head injuries and is partially paralyzed as a consequence. His father, Lasantha Roy, age 45, is a carpenter and his sister Madhusika Laksana, age 20, and his grandmother Kumudini Vasanta are caring for this young victim child. There are many, many more cases like this. The Sri Lankan government and the Catholic Church have assisted some of the families to regain their dignity and hope. But things move painfully slow in Sri Lanka due to bureaucracy causing resentment from those who are yet to receive the assistance they urgently need. So if after seeing this DVD you have compassion and a heart to help your unfortunate brothers and sisters in this world, please do not hesitate to contact me or Sister Noel Christian directly. The, the details are provided at the end of this DVD. Whatever help you can offer with generosity will be considered appreciated and welcomed and of course you will get your just rewards in return by your Creator, if not in this world, then certainly in the next, with the blessings of Almighty God. Beauty.
I would like to close with a hymn that is heard in Christian churches where we are all called upon to put our full faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ in all matters that trouble us. into your hands the things I cannot do. Father, I place into your hands the times that I've been through. Father, I place into your hands the way that I should go. into your hands my friends and family Father I place into your hands the things that trouble me Father I place into your hands the person If it is goods you wish to donate, there is a well-established freight company I have used based in Wilsdon, London, NW10, who will give very favourable charges for shipping goods worldwide. Their contact details are as follows. I would like to close now by thanking you for the time that you've given to watch this DVD and hope that you will respond favorably to the urgent needs 
of a shattered people due to the trauma and suffering that they've undergone. May, may God bless you and thank you once again. Yes, they'll all come to see me in the shade of the old palm trees as we chat and relax.